Good morning, everyone. We are so glad you're with us this morning. We are live at Crossroads Church. We know you're probably in your home or gathered with your uh, family and loved ones. We're going to have church this morning via live stream. Um, if you're new to Crossroads, we are a spirit-filled, spirit-led church in Johnstown, Ohio. Um, and when this is all over, we invite you to join us in the interim. We invite you to join us over the web. Um, I believe that uh, I do have a word for you this morning. I want to give you some encouragement and to help you uh, uh, as we deal with what are certainly challenging times. Uh, before we get started, uh, we want to pray, ask God to be with us, be with us through the internet, uh, and everyone is there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for those of us who are in your house, who are in their houses. Lord, we ask that you move uh, throughout uh, our, our community and our nation today. Lord, let your peace reign in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so we are going to live stream this week, next week, and probably first Wednesday on April 1st. Um, hopefully we'll be back by the time Crossroads turns 5 on April 5th. If not, uh, Easter is April 12th. Um, invite, invite, invite. If you need invite cards, shoot me a text and let me know. Um, if you're our guest and you've never been to Crossroads, please plan to be with us at 1030 on Easter Sunday on April 12th. Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning from two verses. The first one is in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Timothy, uh, Paul writes to Timothy and says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then I want to go to Psalms chapter 20 and verse 6. And it says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven uh, with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I want to talk to you this morning on this subject, no fear. Uh, even in weird times, and we are certainly living in some weird times, the fact that I am preaching right now to a grand total of four people uh, means that we're in, in strange, strange times. Uh, last week, uh, I remember having discussions with people in the church and people at my work that something might be a little sideways in the world. And right now, we are aware that things are a little odd in the world. We are sure of it. Uh, as of this morning, over 300,000 people have been infected with the coronavirus. Um, thousands have, are sick. Thousands have died. And let me tell you, those numbers are going to go up. Uh, as we do more testing, roll out more testing, those numbers are going to go up. And the United States, most of us and a lot of the world, are practicing social distancing right now. If you're an introvert, you've been training for this moment for your whole life. You're so happy. Um, the nearest person to me is on the front pew, and that's probably 10 or 12 feet away. We are social distanced here at Crossroads today. Um, so if you're social distanced and you're stuck at home and you're an introvert, this is your moment. If you're an extrovert, and we have some people here at Crossroads who are huggers, you are challenged right now because you can't be around people. Uh, but some of us are stuck at home and they can't go to work. Uh, we are not only facing a global health pandemic, but the aftershocks of this is chart causing distress in the financial world. Uh, if you have a 401k or if you have a market account, just don't look at it. Just don't. It'll cause you depression. The stock market has been in a free fall. Um, millions of people are out of work as crop commerce grinds to a halt. Businesses have and will close because people aren't going out. And if you're a business owner like me, that's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And it seems that fear is the order of the day. Fear is what everybody is experiencing this day. I have found, first and foremost in my life, if I turn off the news, that's strong medicine to combat that. I, I don't watch the news. I try not to read the news. I like to be informed, but it's, you know, it's death and weather these days, and I'm not interested in just uh, populating my mind with that. So I just turn off the news. But with that, people are rightly afraid of the uncertain future because we are in some uncharted waters right now. 
Uh, in my 51 years, I don't remember a time ever like this. This is a new and changed circumstance I've never seen before. But I want to give you a word from the Bible this morning. Um, and it's don't be afraid. Now that sounds counterintuitive. But I want to, want to stress to you, don't be fearful. Don't be ruled by fear. We read this morning what Paul, or what Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, uh, uh, by the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. And I know people who are perpetually dyspeptic. They're afraid of everything. They're anxious for everything. They are always wound tighter than an eight-day clock. And, and they are so afraid. But that's not the spirit that God's given us. God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's not the will of God that you go around like that. He has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Power. I have the power to address my situation head on. Here's what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you. That's the spirit of power that God has given us. Now, how did Paul tell Timothy that power would be activated? He said, stir up the gift that's in you. There are times... And especially when it, all you hear is bad news and concern and all that. There are times when we need to refocus, not on what is going on around us, but on the power that is within us. If you spend your entire time and your entire life kind of worried about everything, that's a spirit that will perpetuate itself, and you'll be uh, constantly upset and constantly nervous and constantly worried. But there are times that you need to just put all of that aside and, and concentrate and meditate on the power that's within you. That power that's in you is greater than anything that's in the world. John chapter 16 and verse 33 says this, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in John chapter 13 through 16 on the night before his crucifixion. Now, if you want to talk about a stressful time, that's a stressful time. Jesus knows he's about to go to the cross. Jesus knows what's ahead of him. And yet he is speaking peace to his disciples. He is saying, in this time, you ought to have peace. The great thing about Jesus is that he's always speaking peace in a, in a time where there seems to be no peace. That's the wonderful thing about a relationship with Jesus is you can have peace at a time when there is no peace. It's counterintuitive. But look what Jesus says. He says, look, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Expect it. Embrace it. It's going to happen. Uh, if anything has taught us anything in the last week, we understand in the world, we're going to have tribulation. It's going to happen. But Jesus says to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Nothing is going to come at you in life that Jesus doesn't know about. Nothing is going to come at you in life that Jesus hasn't already faced. Here's Hebrews chapter 4 says this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confessions, for we don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, the King James version of that verse, and I read the New King James, says we don't have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. All that means is Jesus gets it when we're going through stuff. Jesus understands when we're going through stuff. And because of that, the writer of Hebrews says, let us go boldly before the throne of grace. We have not been called as Christians to cower in the corner.
corner during trying times. We have not been called to be afraid, to be petrified, to be perpetually worried in trying times. We have been called to make our prayer and supplication known to God. In fact, the writer in Hebrews says, let us come boldly. God loves bold prayers. Don't pray timid prayers. Don't pray small prayers. Pray big chip prayers. Say, God, I need you to move in this situation. There's a global pandemic. There's nothing wrong with saying, God, I need you to move in this situation. I've got to go to work. I've got bills to pay. I've got things that need taken care of. God appreciates bold prayers. People will go, well, that's crazy. That's a science problem. Oh, my God can fix science problems. Amen. Jesus went through an incredible suffering to deal with situations just like these. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He bore our griefs. And he carried our sorrows. There, uh, the things that have caused you to lose sleep this past week. And the things that are causing you to lose sleep in the next week. Those are the things that Jesus bore. And those are the things that Jesus suffered for. The things that have caused you to want to pull your hair out. And the things that have made you want to kick the dog. Don't kick the dog. Those things that have just caused you to go around with that rock in your stomach. Jesus went to the cross for those things. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Humble yourself before God, and he will lift it, you up. And that seventh verse says, Casting not some, not a little bit, not a few, not those you select, not those you cherry pick, not those that you think God can handle. But Peter said, casting all of your cares on him because he cares for you. If you're honest with yourself and you think about what's gone on in the past week and what you're looking at in the coming week, I want you to take all those cares and cast them on Jesus this morning. There is a way to deal with that stuff. The Bible says casting all of our cares on that. Why? Because he cares for you. We read this morning, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Jesus has paid the price not only for your physical healing, but for your peace. Jesus knew that you would need peace in these times. And he's already paid for it. In fact, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says he is the prince of peace. And so it's a building block of the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17 says this, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God isn't eating and drinking, is what Paul writes to the Romans. What Paul is saying there is the kingdom of heaven isn't stuff. It's not stuff. The kingdom of heaven is not stuff. It's not physical blessings. It's not blessings that we get from uh, material blessings. It's not monetary blessings. It's not our house. It's not any of that stuff. The kingdom of heaven is not eating and drinking. Well, the kingdom of heaven, if God blesses me, he's going to give me stuff. He may. And thank God for stuff, right? You need stuff to buy toilet paper at Kroger. Everybody's doing that right now. I got four laughs out of that. Four out of four. I'm, I'm, I'm in it right now. The kingdom of heaven is not stuff, though. Those are certainly God's blessings, and I thank God that we're able to go to the grocery store and get stuff, and I thank God for gas that's under $2 a gallon now that we've got nowhere to go. The Lord works in mysterious ways. What can I tell you? But Paul writes to the Romans, and he says the kingdom of heaven isn't stuff. He says it's not even your body. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 
God gives me righteousness. God gives me peace. God gives me joy. Everything I need in uncertain times, I can find in Jesus Christ. Uh, when I start to worry and when I start to uh, become a little uh, dyspeptic or I start to get a little uh, nervous about things, I, I keep one thing in the back of my mind is I remember that God's got this situation under control. Even if I can't see it, wonderful song we had on our house this morning, even when I can't see it, he's working. I believe that. Even when I can't see the answer, I know God's working on it. We read this morning in Psalm, the 20th Psalm in verse uh, number 6, says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointing. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The psalmist said, I know the Lord saves his anointed. Aren't you glad that you're one of God's anointed this morning? He answers from his holy heaven. That means every time you pray a prayer, and you may say it's a silly prayer. Uh, God, I talked to some of my, my co-workers this week who are trying homeschooling for the first time, and they're locked up at home with their children. And I understand they love their kids, but sometimes being around your kids can be a bit much. Right? It doesn't matter if you have a 10,000 square foot house, it's going to feel like a shoebox by the time you all spend a week in there together. Let a holy separation be good. God hears your prayer, even if your prayer is, God get me through this day so that I don't strangle anyone. People are driving me crazy. People are driving me nuts. God hears those prayers with the saving grace of his right hand. The right hand is the hand of power. God's very own power, the psalmist tells us, backs you up. Some trust in horses and chariots. Some people trust in stuff. But Paul already told the Romans, he said, the kingdom of heaven isn't stuff. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. So when it seems like the world is crashing down on every side, we can look to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. We understand that when we don't understand what's going on, uh, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we're going to remember God's name. There are times when you can, uh, in your quiet place, in your time alone with God, you say, I don't understand what's going on in this world. It all seems crazy. In my 51 years of living, I don't remember ever seeing anything like this before. But I know that God has it all under control. And because God has it all under control, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to worry. Because God has the answer to everything. I don't want to try and work things out in my brain. Guys do that, right? They try and fix stuff. I don't because I'm not mechanically inclined, but I know people who do. Who have tool belts and they want to fix things. And that's our default is to try and fix things. And right now there are things going on uh, in our own lives, in our community, in our country, in the world that we can't fix. Because if you would have been able to fix it, you'd have done it already. And then there comes a time when you have to throw up your hand and say, I can't fix this, but I know the one who can. I can't fix this. I don't have any control over this. And that's a tough thing for us to go, I can't control this situation. I'm a bit of a control freak. And the, if the amens from my family are muted, I appreciate that. I'm a bit of a control freak. I hate this because I can't control any of this. Which means I have to put my trust in God. That's hard for me. That is a challenge for me. Maybe God is using this time for me to go, cut all the other stuff out of your life and put your trust in me. It is what you make of it. God has it all in his hands. I got one last verse. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as this world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus said, I give my peace to you, not like the world gives it. The world's peace is fleeting. It goes from moment to moment. It depends on what's going on in your life. It depends. It's situational. When things are great, I have peace. When things are lousy, I don't have peace. But Jesus said, my peace 
I give to you. Not like the world. My peace I give to you. And then Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. If you don't get anything else out of this, let me tell you this morning, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Instead, choose peace. And sometimes that's a very tough choice to make. Sometimes we have to be intentional about choosing peace. Sometimes I have to shut everything else out and get along with Jesus and say, none of the world makes sense right now. I've got to depend on you. And that's okay. You may find that that will encourage your spirit, encourage your heart, lift you up. Jesus said, let my peace be with you. And don't be afraid. I don't have fear because Jesus has everything in control. Let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your, uh, uh, your peace that passes understanding. God, I thank you right now in this house. We feel your spirit and hopefully across all those who are watching this morning. Move in the Holy Ghost today. Let your peace reign on the earth. We believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. It would not be a Sunday at Crossroads if I didn't say I love every one of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. We will see you next Sunday on live stream. Tell somebody you love them. Reach out to somebody. Make sure they're okay. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. God bless you.